Welcome to a full review of the Mercedes AMG E53. Today, here is the convertible recent E-Class family upgrade, a facelift for sedan, estate, convertible and the Kobe. And today we have here the convertible, the Cabriolet S E53 for you. A very interesting vehicle and also in a brilliant blue Magno, the matte paint here of my favorite color. So please enjoy it together with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front here with the facelift changes, all E-Class front designs have been renewed and Coupé and Convertible always had you know, a little sportier look. Here the 53 models, they have already the vertical fins like you know in the past only the 63 models used to and also just a little stronger look here at the side. Yeah, I mean this one almost looks like a 63 so it's not too much difference then. The headlamps here, they're a little bit slimmer now and come with all E-Class versions, now standard LED, this here already the multi-beam LED for an extended high beam function. And again, this brilliant blue color is available as a metallic color, but also then here in this Magno matte paint. Yeah, a very distinctive choice, definitely. 4 meters 83, 15 foot 8 or 190 inches is the length of the E-Class Coupe or convertible slightly shorter than the sedan or the estate and I mean what a simple but beautiful design here very round shape around the doors it really comes you know great to light especially in this matte paint and then you see even when the roof is closed here almost a coupe silhouette is being kept and with strong shoulder elements here that's typical for coupe and convertible and everything we tell you today is both basically counting both for coupe and convertible option 20 inch wheels right here also with new aerodynamic designs since this facelift and very cool is that you can also open or close the convertible top here with the key so we can show you how that looks like and yeah it's always a very <laughs> cool process and it works up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour or about 30 miles an hour so you can easily do that also while driving that's a very practical thing to do definitely and there you can see once again design also here now this design then comes more to light and I would definitely install a classic fixed wind deflector that's still available that brings the most thing out of it but you can also get this you know air cap system where this front part lifts a little bit up and you have another small wind deflector in the rear better for getting people in and out definitely but when you mainly drive it with two people a standard wind deflector would be better. In the rear, the tailings have been updated with a more modern look on the inside, an E53 logo right here. And once again, this matte color works very well here with the round design shape also for the rear. In the lower part, a diffuser and the 53 gets <whistles> also fake exhaust tips here, round ones, because the real exhaust is behind that then on the inside. That's also a difference to 63 model where you have these rectangular beauty tips but again, the 53 model, that's for coupe and convertible, 63 for estate and the sedan. As for the suspension, 53 and 63 models with the AMG, with the E-Class, always get adaptive air suspension than with a stiffer setup. And difference to 53 and 63 is just really, really tiny. The 63 a little bit stiffer, but hardly noticeable. What do we have under the hood here for the 53 models? This is a 3-liter inline 6 turbo petrol engine you see it does not have this one man one engine concept as a 63 amg model but to me that wouldn't be a problem actually here 435 horsepower is the power output and the acceleration figure is 4.4 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and 
Yeah, that's definitely more than enough. Real biased all-way drive. And I can tell you, you will see it in the driving part, this really gives you enough punch. Here now also with the m half technology, so mild hybrid, might also be you know, some advantages then as for the fuel economy. And of course, the six-cylinder here will be better in the fuel economy than if you compare it, for example, to an eight-cylinder. Kaki, classic design, beautiful and light, why not? Keyless entry, put your hand on the outside, on the inside to close or open. And well, door closing sound here when the convertible is open. Of course, it's not that good, but that's, you know, <laughs> no wonder. So, and then inside of the doors, of course, large door, when you have a convertible or a coupe. And here we have carbon fiber insets here for this AMG model. Optional Burmester sound system with a grade three sound, even works for the convertible. It will sound a little bit better in the estate or in the sedan, but I mean, this is already really, really cool. Huge AMG entry badge then for this long door area. And big face of news is this new steering wheel. You can also get it with microfiber at the sides, which I would recommend. And it has a smaller size, a thicker grip right here, better to handle in steering. However, these are now capacitive buttons here, for example, for cruise control, controlling with the left thumb, the left screen with your right thumb, the right screen. There were touch pads before, but everything else is now also touch and capacitive. And I think it looks cooler definitely here also in this AMG style design, but it's harder to control. And then you also have these lower um, control areas here for the driving modes. We'll soon also show you how it looks like powered up. And here one, you know, more control knobs for driving, not for driving modes, but also for suspension stiffness, exhaust sound and so on. Yeah, I mean, that's quite okay. The problem, I think, capacitive buttons are not really that user-friendly. And you see here also the new setup. Usually it would start with 10.25 inch left and right. An option you can go 12.3 inch left and right. And then you have also this bigger, bigger one-panel design. Well, in both cases, but then in the smaller screen with bigger bezels and here with smaller bezels. And big news, MBUX infotainment finally also now with this facelift for the E-Class. Soon more deals to that. Seats, sport seats are standard for the 53 model and usually they would come with Dynamica microfiber on the inside and Artico high-grade leatherette on the outside. So that would be annual free as for the standard seat for most markets at least. And this is also the, you know, the choice you should actually go for. This is the optional animal skin seat, which is more coast intensive and also will get hotter in summertime and getting inside this is also one of the difference to the c-class the c-class is better parking in and out definitely but here the seat form is more comfortable in the e-class so especially if you're taller you will have a little bit more comfort definitely in the c-class if you compare it to a c-class convertible then that's always the thing about um, pricing i mean a c-class is of course um, cheaper so that's one thing why you might want to go then for the for the smaller model and um, we can also close the convertible top once again because I want to show you um, how it looks like with the headroom so closing here from the inside it's also a nice perspective and for me with one meters 86 or six foot one because I cannot test the headroom when the roof is opened here when it's closed it's actually no problem at all also in the convertible plenty of headroom left right here and again a very comfortable seating position steering wheel goes up and down and out in an electric way right here and this is really one of the most comfortable convertibles. So if you ask me which would be one of the most silent and most comfortable convertibles, I would rather, I think I would go here for the E-Class convertible. To me, even better to be in, um, if I'm compared, for example, to the Bentley Continental, um, because the Bentley Continental is like too plush on the interior, so that already reduces the comfort, I think. Yeah, but might be a personal thing. So this is really also top-notch comfort-wise.
interior overview we know that the e-class convertible has its overlapping on top and everything is wrapped tightly then in the amg version we also have the carbon fiber decor elements right here these round turbine vents always look really impressive and look how the inner part here this you know structure surface is also then mirrored when you move it so that yeah very astonishing i think it looks really cool some say it's overdone what's your take on that then once again you see the dual screen setup 12.3 inch in this top setup and since it's the mbux now you also have the touch screen new thick steering wheel there again once again they look for that right thumb here you control the right screen or then with touch here for volume sliding up and down um, or picking up the phone natural voice input also works now hey mercedes hey mercedes Drive me to Berlin. Of course, you need an online connection for that. So sometimes when you have like, you know, not not a good there, for example, still, you know, still was found, although it was offline. The online support is even better, but we are very remote location right here. So um, this can happen then. This, you know, best natural voice input is always related then also to an online connection. Left thumb you can use then to control these instruments on the left side and also go back to like like home screen here. Zoom on into that in the lower part, setting the cruise control. The capacitive buttons here, you see like there's one button area for the whole area. So like you have one feedback, one feedback for all control functions each. For capacitive feedback, it's good. But still, the old solution were just, you know, more premium as for the touch and easier to use while driving. This special gauge is not a turning gauge, but you pick what you want to do in the upper or lower area. And then you can activate, for example, exhaust note right here or driving dynamics or the suspension settings. So click inside and then adjust it here. This has a better touch and feel to it than one of the earlier versions we, for example, saw in the A-Class or so in the AMG models. And on the right side then, the turning selector for the driving modes. This is good to have it on the steering wheel, then you don't have to, you know, reach down to the lower middle console for that. And speaking about the lower middle console, still a manual climate unit, so easy to control it while driving. I like to have that still. Also a GPS hotkey. Here you can open this cover and then you have USB-C connection then here for your smartphone. So wire connection for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Cup holders adaptive. Then for coupe and convertible you have this rather older pad here. So you can put your hand on there and use it like this for turning inside. Or you can also slide with your finger on it. So um, they said it's like for building reasons because then behind it they have the buttons here for opening and closing the roof and also here for all windows and this is then for the air scarf and here you can open this split armrest like this and reasonable space underneath indeed. More details to the infotainment system like this. Let's take a look at the GPS which has a good visualization. It's nothing new but still very, very solid. And the voice input of the GPS we've shown you already. Here, comfort features, for example, you have an overview of that. You can also have the massage seats, which have a very sophisticated function in here. The ambient lighting is one of the best things the E-Class has. Um, put it all the way up and, um, yeah, maybe put it all the way also to the brightness. And, of course, your color, yeah. Which one do we pick? Ocean blue, which comes close to a Thomas blue color. It also fits with the exterior color. And then you can already see here, for example, around the air vents, for example, and it will be also lower area when it's darker. That's really cool. And Apple CarPlay integration. Oh, I need to unlock that first. Yeah, some German lessons for today. And here we got it unlocked. And then we can also... I uh, have someone on the phone. Hello, someone on the phone here? <laughs> yeah, and then you can also play back this Burmester sound system. And once again, really cool sound. The convertible it makes no difference for that. You can really enjoy that. Digital instruments, left side here. So you can do control it all with your left thumb, for example, what you want to have in the middle part. Um, also left and right can be adjusted. You can also have a GPS screen here in the middle, either with a small map like this, or you can also put it all the way over the screen. This is of course really helpful then when navigating that you don't have to look over to the right, but you can also switch the hole gauges if you like. Like 
this styles and display and then for example also can pick these um, special super sports gauges or here the understate version but that doesn't really you know fit to the um, to the whole car here but you see what i actually want to j jump to super sport but with these capacitive um, buttons navigation buttons it sometimes happens that you over jump something uh, what you want to see this would be you know like this super sports gauge with you know more rpm focus and so on so you can adjust a lot in here but controlling it while driving has become really complicated Head-up display is always a nice option to see the current speed, also loud speed, or also some GPS hints. Especially when you have some IKEA packages in the background uh, behind the head-up display waiting for you on these wooden frames. Now it's time for comments. Thomas in the rear seat with a time code indication. <laughs> Here the front seat is sliding forward automatically when you pull this. So it's a fairly easy entry to the rear and of course here in the E-Class convertible you have a little bit more room than in a C-Class convertible. C-Class would be mid-size segment and this one here E-Class we call upper mid-size segment. That's like a direct German translation. Yeah, that's a German thing. Now I get inside and yeah, that's quite okay. And like this here, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so headroom wise I mean there's really better here with the convertible than with the coupe because it's soft here but I shouldn't put my spine up, up uh, you know just just all the way up and then I can actually sit here once again you see the demands here of the classic wind deflector it works with tall adults at least headroom wise when you you know relax yourself a little bit here now the seat slides backwards and would it work to my position as well I'm yeah directly works with my legs when I'm driving in the front and this would not work in the C-Class convertible so um, yeah that's one of the advantages then with the E-Class convertible once again when it's not a problem with the extra dimensions by the way here I see the vents from the back part and you see here the outgoing on the front part this is here part of the um, you know, of the air scarf system so hot air can be blown into your neck uh, I know people that really love that um, to me personally, when it's really cold, I wear a jacket and a convertible anyway, and then my neck is covered. And when it's really hot, I don't need the air scarf. So to me, it's not really necessary, but I also know people that really love that option. I wonder why there's always such a fight between boot and trunk. You know, always getting comments when I say trunk. Like, how can you say trunk? <laughs> yeah, so let's vote. Is it boot or is it trunk? Let's vote in the comments. So let's take a look at the boot or the trunk. Here we go. And this, of course, convertible style not too much however a backpack fits also upright in here in the back this would still work no problem this is also you know when the roof is down and that way this would work when the roof is up so that's the maximum space you have available then and you can also fold the seats left and right like this and I have to go around and fold them or you you know just reach through with your luggage and push them so that's both possible but <laughs> it's a little bit tricky so in this case it's better yeah that's with the seat yeah there we go hey guys so you can also load through longer things that's possible again it always depends on if you are using the roof or not and there's a button right here so this is the one for this yeah for this split and when you push it it helps you you know with putting that up or in so yeah i think solution is okay just have to remember this is the height limit then when the roof is down welcome to thomas's active driving lounge <laughs> with the Mercedes AMG E63, sorry, E53 convertible. So, yeah, you, you hardly mistake it, you know, after hearing that sound here in the tunnel, you could think that's a 63, but it is not. It's a 53. And the difference is two cylinders. So we have here the inline six cylinder, whereas the 63 would have the V8. But that's not available for the convertible and the coupe. It's reserved for the sedan and the estate. Yeah, and I think that's actually totally fine. So often you think, you know, like the V8 has better sound and so on. Yeah, it is definitely different, but I mean, 
were we lacking a V8 sound there? I guess not. And power, yeah, I mean, a second slower is the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour if you compare it then to the 63 model, but I mean, still plenty of power left here with the 435 horsepower in this engine. And here, the steering is very direct and precise. Um, you do, you know, need to work it a little bit, but it feels very natural then. Not the most progressive, but that's totally fine. So overall, I like the steering setup. And the new steering wheel here with the facelift has a very, you know, compact size, really small, good and thick grip. So that's really cool. And then let us show you some acceleration right here. Whoa, and that was already zero to 80. Wow, pretty cool and wow. Well, Definitely not lacking any performance here from the six cylinder. And hey, once again, good sound. And you also hear that here in the convertible. Wow, pretty cool. So nice and sporty atmosphere here. And also as for the suspension setup, adaptive air suspension. It is hardware basically the same as in the 63 model as well. And just like a tiny notch that the suspension in the 63 is a little bit stiffer and directer, but just a minor difference. And yeah, this really feels so cool, so agile, this handling. And what they have also done is when you go to the comfort mode, you really have more comfort than before. So far, the suspension in the 63 model was really super stiff and you lacked comfort. Here now in the comfort mode, it's way better than before. Yet at the same time, in the Sport or Sport Plus mode, it is even sportier than before. Um, so very good setup and definitely more comfort without losing sportiness. Here we're going to drive a little bit faster now, 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Um, there could be like the classic wind deflector, I would recommend that. Um, but for, you know, easier getting people in and out, you can also use this air cap system here. Then like a small wind deflector is going up in the rear. And there's also this additional lip going up in the front. So it indeed reduces the wind noise, especially like the low frequent wind noise. and then you hear rather a high frequent wind noise from the top, but it's better bearable in, in the interior. Um, let me just go back again, now that you can see the bit difference, or maybe hear the difference. Not sure if you see it with, maybe with my hair. I mean, there's, there's more wind turbulence in here now, and when you put it up back again, there we go. So it's a little bit less wind turbulence than here in the interior but to me I would always go for a standard big wind deflector that always has a better effect definitely and you know we saw there are still some mounts as for that here once again and about one kilometers an hour very stable again so masters sportiness and comfort at the same time very well and to me the 53 is also better compromise you pay less money than for the 63 the six cylinder he had a great sound also great performance it's also a little bit lighter on the front axle which i also prefer for as for driving so even if it wouldn't be about the price i would still prefer the 53 model it just feels lighter not only if you compare like convertible and sedan also if you compare 53 63 you know inside the very same um, body segment so once again sport plus mode and we can accelerate it out for example here from 50 kilometers and 100 wow really cool and it's such a pleasure you know i'm really like a convertible lover and this is really a pleasure the e-class convertible is also basically an all-season convertible but again even more so with the standard wind deflector that would be even better than it would be you know even less wind turbulences here on the interior but one kilometers or 60 miles now is still a bearable speed here also when driving with the open top definitely and also while driving, we can open or close the convertible roof. So up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. So when I'm, for example, going on the motorway, well, now the traffic light turned to red, but even if it wouldn't have turned to red, I can still open and close that convertible top. Oh, so I was overtaking while the traffic light was red. Well done. So why would you do that? Hmm. And now we get on the motorway. Here we go. Once again, we put it to sports plus mode. Now with the closed top and Wow, mainly it's super silent and these, you know, 
multiple layers in this soft top are really very well insulated so we don't have such a difference to the closed versions and now let's accelerate it out. that was and all the way 170 kilometers an hour wow so great acceleration once again from the six cylinder here of course you do feel an acceleration difference especially in the higher speed regions to the eight cylinder that the eight cylinder just has even more punch but I mean you already have so much fun here with the six cylinder definitely and this is a convertible and we're driving here at about 140 kilometers an hour now and it's super silent in here. So, I mean, just at really, really high speeds, then the Coupe, for example, would have an advantage as for wind turbines and so on. But probably this is the most silent convertible on the market overall as for the wind turbines, especially when it's here the close top. And this feels so effortless. Now at about 180, 180 kilometers an hour, and it would, would once again, we are driving a convertible with closed top now. No one would expect that. So this convertible here, at, at almost 200 kilometers or 125 miles an hour, is more silent than most, than like most all other cars on the market. Um, this is really astonishing. And also suspension-wise, so stable on the road, so effortless. Yeah, that's really very cool. If you compare a C-Class convertible, by the way, the C-Class convertible is a little bit more agile because it's smaller, has less weight and so on. But the E-Class offers you a little bit more comfort, a little bit more room. So it depends on, you know, when you have problem with parking space and so on, that might be speaking for the C-Class then. When you live in California and, um, you know, parking spots are not an issue, then you might as well kind of go for the E-Class if price doesn't play a role. C-Class is, of course, definitely cheaper and here even at higher speed regions you still have power reserves and really astonishing astonishing again how you know stable and effort effortless this car is driving wow really cool and the new suspension setup here with the upgraded hardware once again does a great job in giving you even more comfort although you're driving a top sporty version here of a vehicle yeah this is really something to enjoy all the time, both, I mean, open top and closed top. And I can just stress again that with a closed top, you basically have a coupe. I mean, so super silent. Um, yeah, that's really astonishing. Once again, very stable here in the corner. And when you're driving normal speeds with this car, it really also, once again, feels like standing still. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes E53, today as the convertible. Really cool driving experience. First of all, from the exterior looks, definitely a stronger look than before with the facelift. So, well, the convertible doesn't have too much change as we compare, for example, to sedan. The E-Class sedan has the most drastic change in design with this facelift. Interior now with the new infotainment system, MBUX with natural voice input and different screen sizes and you definitely profit from that just have a better infotainment system and again the voice input and so on and touchscreen the new steering wheels it is great from the looks and also from driving however controlling the capacitive buttons on the steering wheel that is more complicated than before this car here real dream car good built interior interior build quality the standard seat will also come animal free and also more sustainable that's also cool so checked also for the E53. And this inline six cylinder is very good compromise between comfort and sportiness. It doesn't weigh too much and it has enough of performance. So I think it's not bad at all that you don't get the 63 models for the coupe and the convertible. This is here totally fine, totally enough. Driven the other ones in the 63 in the sedan and the estate. Yes, the V8 has more punch, definitely. But this one already with a great sound and great performance definitely enough and also a better price performance deal driving with open top is possible with this vehicle here basically all season long so that's a lot of fun and with closed top you have this nice silhouette definitely and you can drive so fast and still feel like a closed coupe 
wind and uh, you know noise insulation wise and from the wind noises so really astonishing one of the most silent cars here overall although it is a convertible so as it stands here right now just with the base dynamica article seats that would also be one of my dream cars definitely especially for example when you live in california also so tune in for other reviews right here on our channel would like to see you right there and leave us some feedback to this vehicle here today see you next time